Hello? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Alright, my friend. So you are a Muslim. I don't understand your text to me. Explain to me who are you, my friend. You are live on air. You cannot hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, I'm saying uh, your text is not clear for me, so are you a Muslim? Yes, I am a Muslim. I live in Bangladesh. Okay. I have all family. Okay, all, all your family are Muslim and you are a Muslim. Okay. So, what do you like to share with us, my friend? My, well, my, uh, my mother's side is Christian and they were converts. And uh, when I was young, I wasn't taught much about uh, Christianity. I was raised in Islam, and mm -hmm. I believed in Islam. And in fact, a couple of years ago, when I was a devout Muslim myself, I, def I defended Islam. Okay. And uh, things were provoking it. It, could, it hit my belief. But when I started realizing and rationalizing this stuff, uh, this uh, I understood that this doesn't make any sense. So, and uh, then people like you, David Wood, and uh, some other apostate prophet came. And okay, so did you so, did you decide to leave Islam now? Well, uh, I believe in Islam, and I do not because, uh, in fact, I I, be, I would like to believe that Jesus. In the divinity of Jesus, because I I believe that I want to be saved. But uh, the problem that I have is uh, Jesus forgives everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone in Christianity is forgiven. So what is the price of a crime? No, this is a this is wrong understanding. When when we say everyone is forgiven, doesn't mean that you can go and go make a crimes. Forgiveness is for those who repent and promise not to do more not for those who want to do more crime. And if you commit a crime, doesn't mean it's not there. Forgiveness simply is just God. He will not, uh, let us say, take you to court because he gave you a chance to repent and to be a better person. And you need to ask forgiveness even from the one, not only from God, even from the one who you decide uh, to harm. And if he is, let us say, uh, the person you harm does not exist no more, uh, you have to pray from your heart asking for forgiveness even uh, uh, even if he is dead, let us say. So you have to be decent and you uh, repent, and you need to need to promise that you will not do it again. So the price of a crime is there. Jesus, he said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but the one who do his will. Which means, it's not just saying I for, I believe in you. Doesn't matter. It's not just saying I, I wouldn't believe in stupid shahada. You know that will not help you. Jesus, you cannot, you cannot fool Jesus, you cannot be fraud with him. You cannot say Shahada and you're supposed to, you will go to heaven and you get all the girls. In Christianity, you have to be decent from your heart. So you have to believe, and if you believe, you do what you believe. In Islam, no. In Islam, you believe, you say something, you do something. In Christianity, no. So yes, there's a price for a crime, and everyone will pay for his crime. Okay, but what if your faith is weak? Okay, this is not my place to judge because no. it's God's. Okay, no problem. If your faith is weak, that's mean you don't deserve. I mean, it's, it's your, it's your, it's your problem. It's, it's your weakness, not God. Okay. You know, I mean, He gave you everything. He told you everything. Still, you don't want to believe. That's your business. Yes. If a fireman he come to your house and he said there's a fire, I see smoke coming from your house. Get out, and you say no, I don't believe you. And then you are burned in the house. Is that his fault? Mm, that is my fault, not his. Exactly. So you You're know, right. God, he warned you. He taught you. He sent. In a, he did everything he can do to save you. And you said, still, you don't want to believe. Huh? That's your business. Thank you for clearing this up. I hope that. I could prove my faith to myself first. I'm starting to be a believer and seeing the demonic Islam, it's true face, but I cannot express because in my Facebook, when I go to my page, I see all the things, all the, like the, the, 
uh, the apostate prophet reaping the Quran. Nobody is hearing what he's saying, but everybody's like, report this guy, report this guy. It, it saddens me so much. It feels like I'm alone. No, my friend, it's, it's very good that they are doing that because the Bible uh, gives us advice, says, from their fruits you shall know them. So if Islam is good, why they are doing those things? Islam did not make them better people, so they are doing what they what Islam told them to do, a gang system, you know? So those things help us, actually, to prove the quality of the God. If the God is good, yes. then the followers, they should act good as their God, but their God, he was a gang, a gang member, he's a thief. Muhammad is a caravan rider, yes. Muslims, they are proud about him. They attack people in the street, take their money, take their wallet, you know? And he, he, he kidnapped women, he kidnapped children, he killed women, he cut her to pieces when she was alive, she's over eight years old. He, he brought a man, he tortured him to, to ask him, what is your money? But this is his money. Why you want, why you are torturing the guy? Because he's just he's a Jew. We, we have to take the money of the Jews. So, Muhammad is a thief, so what do you expect? What do you expect from somebody he believed in a thief to be his best man? You should not be surprised. So, my friend, are you willing to accept Jesus as your Lord and denounce Muhammad as a devil? to denounce Muhammad as a devil and I like to well my faith is not that strong but I'm starting to believe so yes I, I mean believe to, in Jesus hallelujah I mean to that here we go our friend here he accepted the Messiah as his Lord as Savior and I want you to go right now and read Matthew chapter 7 and you will see okay. how that chapter will help you and you will see the huge difference between the devil and the teaching of Christ. You see, teaching of Christ, you do not need a book to be a different person. A sentence, just a sentence. Love your enemy. Love your enemy. Sentence. One sentence can change the whole earth. All of us. Christian, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, doesn't matter. Love your enemy. If everybody loves his enemy, there's no enemies. And if there's no enemy, there's no army. There's no police. Do you know how much money we spend in army? Which can build millions of houses, schools, which can make the earth flourish, be like heaven, if we practice one sentence of Christ's teaching. But nobody want to practice. The human being is devilish, and Muhammad is the Antichrist, for he always practices exactly the opposite of what Jesus said. She said. Jesus says, love your enemy. Muhammad says, kill them wherever you find them. Torture them. Cut their fingertips. Cut their neck. I've been ordered to kill and torture all mankind. So, Muhammad teaching is totally the opposite of Christ. And Muhammad, because he's evil, he used the name of Christ to fool many. He says, we believe in Isa. Who is this Isa? Even the name is wrong. They don't even know what Isa means. They don't know where his name is coming from. But I understand. Isa simply, Muhammad most likely, he thought, he thought uh, Maryam, the sister of Aaron, she have a brother, mostly. His name is Isa. And he thought, Muhammad, he thought, this is Isa. The brother, the, the, the son, sorry, uh, the son of Maryam, Maryam, the sister of Aaron, and he's not a brother, he's a son, and he thought this is the same person. So he thought Isa is a son of Maryam, he is, his uncle is Moses and Aaron, for he's a fraud. And to, to make it more worse, he said that the, the, uh, the father of Mary, his name is Umran, but this is the same name exactly of the father of Moses. Even the name he called it correct, wrongly, it says or say the Umran, he said Umran. Because he was listening to the Jews, he did not hear them correctly saying it. I mean, he did not hear it, not them did not say it correctly. So, Omran, who's who? He's the father of Maryam. Omran is yeah. the father of Maryam too. This is true. But Maryam, the sister of Aaron, and this is what the Quran says, O oh, sister of Aaron. When, they, when the Jews got him busted, they said to him, you idiot, what are you talking about? There's hundreds of years between Moses and Jesus. He said, oh, at that time, they used to call them by their great uh, ancestors, but, uh, but Maryam, uh, Aaron, is not even from the tribe of, of, of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So, he is a fraud. The proof is all over. And you do not need to be genius to find out. Same time, fruits, my friend, always follow the fruits. From their fruits, you, you shall know them. And now you accept the Christ. I have, I have an advice for you. You go to a church, look at the fruit of those people in that church. Is it good fruit? If it is, stay. If it's not, because the Bible says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, we're into the kingdom of my father. There's many, they are false teachers, false priests, like Muhammad, doing business. So you have to be careful. 
from their fruit you shall know them a christian minister if you ask him a question he have to be honest he cannot be perfectly correct anyone he want to teach you the bible if he is perfectly correct he is a false person you know what i mean Yes, yes. If you ask him, what do you think? What do you think about Islam or any other topic? He starts saying, God, He love everybody. This is not a question. God love everybody. We don't get that. But we knew that the Bible says that people will go to hell and people will go to heaven. So what this is, I'm asking you is, okay. what do you think about Muhammad? If he starts saying to you, well, you know, uh, we believe Muhammad is Abrahamic, Abrahamic. So that's mean Muhammad is a good guy. The second they say he's Abrahamic, that's mean they are approving him and they are fraud. Muhammad is not Abrahamic. Since when he's Abrahamic? What make him Abrahamic? Did Abraham kiss his stones? Did Abraham pray to stones? Did, did, well, did Abraham they, teach they, us to have they, sex with the children? Yeah. So when they say to you Abrahamic, yeah. what, what Muhammad do you have to do with Abraham? Nothing. Even in the Muslim books, it says that Muhammad, uh, Ishmael, sorry, according to Muslims, he was in Mecca and he learned Arabic at the age of 11. So how he can be the father of the Arab? You know what I mean? If I go to Germany at the age of 11, and then you say to me that the German are descendant of a Christian prince, that would be the most funny, stupid thing. The German are exist already when you say he, he learned Arabic and he married from a tribe which is the enemy of the tribe of Muhammad. So how Muhammad became from the children of, of uh, uh, Ishmael. And at the same time, the Bible says that Ishmael, he married an Egyptian woman. So the father is from Iraq, Aramaic, in his language speaking. His wife, she is Egyptian. And Ishmael, he married an Egyptian. So how the son is an Arab? You see? So Muslims, they use this uh, strategy just to make you accept Muhammad by saying, like and now these days, by the way, many of the Muslims, they do the same. They say, I am descended from Muhammad. Uh, Al-Qazafi, he is descended from Muhammad. Saddam Hussein, he is descendant from Muhammad. The king of Morocco, he is descendant from Muhammad. Al-Baghdadi is descendant from Muhammad. Every scumbag in the world, he wanted to control you, control the Muslims. He claimed that he is descendant from Muhammad. But the Quran says, Muhammad had no children. You know what I mean? Yes. It's a fraud system. Yes, it's a fraud I, I system. Understand. So to control you, they say, I am descendant of Muhammad, and then people, they will say, oh, he is from the Prophet family, so we have to obey him. Uh-huh, yeah, right. And the funny, the, the, the Muslims, they say, uh, like Muhammad is the Prophet, so why you need to obey a family member? I mean, did he become a Prophet too? Did he inherit prophecy? You know, even the Quran says something very uh, 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 exposing to the stupidity of Muhammad. Uh, when the when the Quran speak about the prophethood, what uh, the Quran says, the Quran says that Allah He made from the seeds of Isaac and Jacob the prophethood. But Muslim they say he's from Ishmael. <laughs> Read it. This is the Quran. Chapter 29, verse number 27. He's quoting two names only. From his seed, the prophethood. What names he's quoting? What is the seed? Isaac and Jacob. And here you need to ask yourself a question. Why Allah did not start with Ishmael? I mean, Ishmael is the elder in the family. How come he jumped Ishmael? So, and we made and bestowed on him Abraham, Isaac, and Ish and Jacob, and ordained among his offspring the prophethood. Where is Ishmael? Stupidity. Anyway, my friend, I'm so happy for you that you left Islam. And uh, if you have any question for me, I will be happy to answer you. Anything else? Thank you, Christian Prince, for your time. No. Uh... I think I will research everything myself, and thank you. You're welcome. If you want your family to talk to me, I will be happy to talk to them. You told me your family is still Muslims, right? Yes, yes. In fact, uh, there, it, uh, there was a Islamic political party in my country, and my grandparents used to be 
some sort of thing in in that and um, my father in fact my father is not like them my father is not a religious person either he doesn't believe in god much uh, he he lost his faith i don't know because of my grandparents or something but he is kind of different and my grandparents tried to force the religious view on them so in this perspective i i get some liberty about thoughts thinking but i cannot express because i am supposed to be uh, islamic i'm supposed to say that uh, muhammad is peaceful or else i'm going to like you can search what happens in bangladesh extremist everywhere if you say anything about islam they will chop off your head yeah and but uh, they, like, they, they, so they, they, they have they have money for the for knives to cut head of people but they don't have money to fix their the trains to fix their schools to feed the poor but right away you say something about islam yeah this is why you know uh, they, they don't want by by terror they want islam to stay alive islam is dead how we can keep it alive by terrifying anyone try to open his mouth it's a gang system but that will not work you know that will not work because simply today we have we are in the in the age of the internet and now soon there's a new company in usa they are launching actually already they launch uh, uh, thousands of uh, satellite and soon they will have internet high speed internet to every spot in the world every spot and many countries who they are very poor they will get for free so look what will happen now things will become a revolutionary revolutionary nobody can stop the internet anymore even if you live in the middle of the desert and there's no cable there's no more than there's nothing you have a phone you have internet soon is going to happen and they are planning that this will be starting from the next year it's not like 20 years from now so already they have i think 2 3000 satellite already launched and they need to launch way more the starting from 4000 the project will start broadcasting internet starting from USA and then they will cover the whole world so you can imagine what will happen and remember here, uh, because it's coming from satellite, they cannot make a proxy, they cannot block anything, they have no control. You know what I mean? Like now, uh, Pakistan, they are blocking my videos in their, in, in their uh, 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 through their proxy, you know, through the, the, because the cable is coming through them at the end of the day. So they can block website, they can block anything. But by having satellite, it's not going through anyone, it's just coming directly to your phone. Or your laptop how they can stop that islam is history my friend and revolution is coming actually in the last just 15 years what we were able to do because of the internet is beyond imagination when i when i see the uh, indonesian watching my videos by, by millions i never thought i would be able to reach indonesia the biggest islamic country in the world never never i thought you know my dream was small, it's just to, uh, it is, my start was very small, like a couple of people listening to me. And they don't, even the small number, they don't want to listen. Even the small number, they don't. We need to struggle to get 10 people to listen. When you make it 20, like, wow. Now I have right now 1,148 people, and this is not even my original channel. This is not my original channel. 100, 1,147 people live. So things is going out of hand, and Islam is dead. And as you see, where are they? Here we go. You call me, you leave Islam. Where are they, the, the, the sheikhs? Where is the sheikhs? He go. You're, you know, this is a Muslim. He left Islam. Who is a Muslim? Who is willing? To, Muslim sheikh is willing to call me right now and get him back to Islam. Who dare to do it? They don't, because they knew they can. They, they are no match. They only they have big mouth when you have nothing. You are ignorant. And you know when we are ignorant, anyone can fool us. Anyone. Yes. People, they can take your credit card. People, they can uh, uh, rip you off. Uh, people, they can cheat on you. Ignorance. Our, you know, human being, his best enemy, let us say the more powerful enemy, is his ignorance. Why when the, why when the light is off, you cannot walk fast, even if you are in your home? Because you are ignorant in this stage. Now, we don't see. That's what ignorant can do. It turn you blind. 
You can step on the fire and you don't know. You can cut your feet, you do not know. You can step on a snake and you do not know. Ignorant. And you think the snake maybe is a something, maybe you think this is the hand of your wife. So ignorance is our enemy and we are trying to save the Muslims by sharing the knowledge with them. This is what the Lord, he says, read the books, find the truth and the truth will set you free. And look at this sentence, my friend, the truth will set you free. And today you are free. In Islam, even when you believe you go to heaven, you are a slave of sex. You will spend your eternity doing nothing but a slave of more sex, more food, non-stop. With the Christ, he said he and she, they will not get married, they will be the same as angels. Why? Because the best gift he can give you is to be free. You have no needs. You are free. Imagine how beautiful it is to be free. You know, you go, you keep going, you keep going. You do not need gas, you do not need food, you do not need to rest, you do not need to sleep. You are just happy. And when the Muslim, they say that Allah is trying to make us happy by sex, can God make happy? Happiness higher than sex? I mean, he's God. The one who can, the one who created little joy of inside you, it's called sexual joy. Can he make a higher joy? He can. That's why we call him Almighty. So this is the animal joy inside you. So your God, the false God, Allah, he try to control you by the joy which is already exist. He is not giving you something. It is already exist inside the animal you. So he tried to make you more animal by making you more addicted to sex, more addicted to food, more addicted to needs. With Jesus, you are free. The same as an angel. You do not need to sleep. You do not need to eat. You do not need to get married. He and she equally, they will be the same as angels. Not like in Islam, the man, he will have 72, and the woman, she will be a sex toy. He and she. So my sister in Christ, she will go to heaven, and she will be the same as I am, as an angel. We will not be angels, but we will be the same as angels, which means we have the nature, which this nature is free of all needs. No hunger, no suffering, no food, nothing. And we will enjoy a happiness no one can describe, for it's above all the happiness we knew. When you do have sex, okay, for how long you will be enjoying it? We don't want to go in details, but it's limited. And then after that, what? When you eat, how much you can eat? And what kind of joy is that? But with the Christ, God is almighty. He will make us a different person. You see, even in medicine, they give you some medicine to fight depression. Medicine, a doctor, you know, they do it in the laboratory. Some chemical go inside your brain and make you happy, which is drugs. God do not need to do that. God, he will make you happy for real without the drugs. He will not drug you. He wants you to be awake. He will not be to be addicted. He wants you to be free, and he wants you to be called the child of God. And this was one of the amazing things about Christ. When, when they asked him how we pray, he said, pray like this. Our Father out of heaven, our God, he don't want slaves. He wants children in his kingdom. This is how much he loves us. Imagine you are the king of kings, and everyone in your yard is a child of yours in a noble way not in a sexual way. He love you as a child, he care for you, he protect you. So the happiness of God, which will be given to the children of God, cannot be measured by a dish of falafel as Muhammad described, or a private part sex. That is the lowest of the lowest human being trying to seduce us by the temptation of the devil. I mean, do I need to be a genius to know that this is from the devil. A man, he come to your door, he knock at your door, he say, hey, believe in me and I will give you 72 women at least for sex. Isn't it obvious that this is satanic? In the top of that, 80,000 boys and the Quran say they will bleed. And you ask the Muslims, okay, if in the heaven, food will come to you if you think about it. Tree will walk to you if you think about it. A bird will be cooked and be in front of you if you think about it. So what, and your clothes will never be get dirty, will never be ruined. You will never even change your t-shirt. You will never take a shower. You will never sleep. You will never get tired. So why, what the servant for? What is 80,000 boys who the Quran described them as white as pearls? Speaking about how pretty they are. Very sexual, disgusting cult. In the top of that, 
how in the world I can be happy after abusing 80,000 little boys to serve me. Let us say for the sake of argument they are for ser servant. How I can be happy having 80,000 little child abused by me. So look what Islam do. Instead of freeing us, all of us from slavery, we find that the heaven is the biggest slave center in the world. Each one of us, we will have hundreds and thousands of women, and at least, this is the lowest heaven, 80,000 little boys to serve us. This is the biggest country, if we can say it's a country, of slavery. So while with Jesus we are free, in Islam, we are slave owners in the heaven. Land of slavery and injustice. Because all of slavery is about injustice. Somebody controlling somebody. So they will say to you, oh God, he created them to serve us, so what? So what, do you like to be one of them? Oh, no, 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 I like to be served. See the hypocrisy? That is Islam, my friend. And if anyone, he have little dignity, he will notice that this is, cannot be from God. Cannot be, cannot be from God. The Quran described those little boys, they are as a preserved pearls. Why he is talking about white kids? Why they are white? Because Islam is a racist cult. No one is allowed to be in this heaven except white. Even the servant have to be white. The master have to be white. How this is, can be from God? All right. Uh, okay, my friend. Thank you for uh, for calling, and I'm happy for you that you can accept the Christ. If you have any question, let me know in the future. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All You're right, welcome friend. too. T take care. Take care. Good have a good you. day. You too. <laughs> we have somebody. I don't know what he's saying here. Let's put it in the screen. I guess he's from Indonesia. I don't know if he's a Muslim. There's one unwritten rule regarding debate in Indonesia. When losing debate, then you must enter the winning religion. That is, that is why Islam always speak of dialogue. I never heard of Islam speak of dialogue. Islam speak of dialogue? So why Muhammad, he killed his enemies who don't accept when the Christians, they came to Muhammad and they said to him, we want to debate you. Do you know what Muhammad he did? We just curse each other. That is the dialogue you are talking about? Obviously, you are an ignorant. You do not know what are you talking about. This is the Quran, chapter 3, verse number 61. A bunch of Christians came to debate Muhammad. What Muhammad he did? Did he refute them? He did he debate them? No. He says, Whoever disputes you about concerning Isa, Jesus, after the knowledge has come to you, okay, tell them, tell them, huh? come, come, let us call, call our sons and all your sons, you idiot, those are bishops, they don't have sons, they don't have wives, our women and your women, ourselves and yourself, and then we pray and invoke sincerely the, the curse of Allah upon the one who lied. You see the stupidity? Where is the guy who said to me, dialogue? This is dialogue? Cursing party? I debate with a Muslim according to this. He will take the mic. May Allah kill me and cut my toes if I'm lying. You're a terrible Christian prince. Uh, uh, may Allah, uh, you know, uh, shorten my beard from 21 meter to 20 if I'm lying. Your turn. I pray to Allah. If I'm lying, that Allah will make me even more skinny. So when you turn the fan, Allah will make me fly. Dialogue. I mean, this is the most stupid comment ever I heard. Since when Muslims have the yellow? Isn't it the Quran in chapter 9, verse 29 says, kill those who don't believe in Allah? This is the yellow? I mean, look how they fool you. We are people who believe in dialogue. Are you sure? Right away after Muhammad, he got his army, he had men to kill. No dialogue, kill anyone. And even when before, look at this dialogue. Let us curse. Okay, may Allah cut your shish kebab if you are lying. Your turn. What this is? If I am debating someone, he is a Hindu, and he said to me, I believe in 36 million gods. 
Should I say to him, you are lying, you don't believe in that, you idiot? This is what he believes, he's not lying. There's a huge difference between a person who believes in a lie and a person who is a liar. Correct, guys? Because if I am a Hindu and I believe in a belief, like let's say some they worship rats. Okay, for me, rats are not God. This is a lie, but he's not a liar. The person himself who believes in that is not a liar. He's a, he's a truthful, he believes in it. So here you see that the one who made this verse is a donkey. The one who made this verse is a donkey. If I'm debating with a Muslim and he is truthful, he say, I believe that Muhammad is a prophet. Muhammad is a false prophet, he's a liar. But the person who believes, he is not lying to me about what he believes. So this is a stupid statement. What dialogue? When you have a dialogue, you cannot speak to a turtle. Muhammad, he have a brain of a turtle. Like Nancy Bellusi. Can you even find me somebody who have an, an IQ to talk to me? This is why they don't dare to call me. This is why they don't dare to debate me. Their IQ is in the bye-bye. We Muslim, we have dialogue. Since when? Last time I called Mimi, he played for me a video. I was saying to a Muslim woman, suck on me. But the coward, he cut my video. It was her. She was insulting Jesus. And I said to her, the prophet said, they suck on me. Cowards, since when you have dialogue? You have more curry. You have bully. You have lies and you have violence. And yet you claim that you are a person of dialogue. And here we go. I am here. Who want to debate me and make me lose? And then I will accept Islam so I can get the 70 turtle. I like to have 70 turtle. Are you sure those are versions of turtles? I mean, the idea even to accept that there is a God, he will give you a lot of women for sex, prove to me that you must be stupid and mental. You open the box like, we are here, the women Allah promised us, and they start jumping on you, like, what is that? You know, when you talk to a, a person who is a thinker, someone he spends his life studying, you know, deep, uh, trying to observe this amazing world, and then you say to him, I will give you a box of women, I mean, what, what is that? Is that the priceless gift of God? The promise alone is a stupid. I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about their logic. Uh, it, we know what kind of God he promised me women with big boobs. What if I like them small? Huh? I mean, they have to be big? How big? How big they are. Why this God is focusing in the boobs of the women and their size? This is going to be God. Brother, if you believe in Prophet Muhammad, brother, you will get women with seven boobs, brother. Seven boobs, brother? Yes, brother, seven boobs. Booby, booby? Yes, brother. Like the one we saw in cartoons, Scooby Doo. Scooby Scooby Doo. This is God. This is God is trying to make me believe by talking about the size of the boobs. Beep beep. Beep beep. Should I take with me like a, a measurement tape so I can measure how big they are to check if there's like a defect, we can return them. Is that the policy? Like Allah maybe you know, the hadith says that Allah, he spent 1,000 years to soften the skin of a Muslim woman in the heaven. Why? She is a legator. 1,000 years. I mean, get some Vaseline, you idiot. There's a machine can make concrete softer than the skin of a little baby in less than five minutes. 1,000 years took Allah to soften the skin of each woman. Why? Guys, what, what the name of this animal, the slow one? 
What is the name of this animal, the slow one? Anyone knows? I forgot his name. He's very slow, you know? Yeah, this guy, here we go. Huh. We found him. But even this one is a, is a faster than Allah. Here we go. 1,000 year, why? What's wrong with this God? The Muslim, they say to us, if Allah wants something to happen, he say, be is going to be. Yet it take him 1,000 years to make a, to make one woman skin smooth. Go to the pharmacy, get some Vaseline, Nivea. You know, your wife, she will become a, a smooth like, a, and, and why 1,000 years? So she is made from what? I mean, can't Allah make her what he make her from the beginning, smooth? So like what? He was using concrete and uh, there's the stones and then they have to, he cannot just make it, uh, make her like a smooth? This is making me think that Eve, she was like made of uh, uh, solid rocks and uh, what is that? Very slow, Allah. How come Allah is so slow to make the women's skin smooth, but he's so fast to make verses for Muhammad private part? Muhammad, you want the women? Right away, the verse is there. Any believing woman, she offer herself to the Prophet. This is a privilege for him. Do boom, boom to her. Right away, the verse is there. Check my sky. Okay, let's see. 